we are going to talk about water today. But before that, with this whole acid and base um, equation stuff, I have one I want to show you. So if I wrote something like this here, can you tell me which one's the acid and which one's the base? Because um, this one here is written without water. Can you still tell who gained a proton and who lost a proton? Like the only way you can tell is obviously I gave you the equation. So, All right, can you see who gained a proton, who lost a proton? So then how can you assign? Is this an acid? Is this a base? How can you tell? From here to here, what happened? You lost a proton, right? So based on this equation here, I can also tell this is an asset. So if they gave you an equation and ask you who's asset and base, you can easily tell by looking and see what the changes are. So that one lost a proton to get this. So this must be the conjugate base. And then this one here gained a proton. So this is a base. And this guy will be your conjugate acid. Okay, so I wanted to show that, you know, if I ask you to write, we always write it with water, but if they give you an equation without water, you can still do it. All right, so let's continue with um, water. So water is kind of cool. So we're gonna talk about auto ionization of water. Okay, so in our case here, we know water as H2O liquid, okay? Now, most of them, it stays as a liquid. Very, 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 very small fraction of it. I think it was like two in a million or two in a billion that actually can split up um, into ions. Uh, it's a H plus. Which minus very small amount of it. Okay, very, very small amount of it can turn into ions. This is if you wrote it without the hydronium, without the hydronium ion equation. If you wanted to write it with the hydronium, you write H2L, H2O plus H2O, and it splits. One gets gains the proton to get hydronium. The other one loses the proton to get hydroxide. So water does split. Okay, depending on the temperature, um, water can split differently because, you know, if you change the temperature, um, the K position can change. Um, so in, in our case here, if we ever had to write K for this equation, um, I like to write it like this or this is the same thing, but KW, can be written as, if you follow the first equation is H plus times OH minus. You don't put water on the bottom because it's liquid, okay? Or you can write using the second equation with this and this. So KW, because it's K of water now, it's H3O plus OH negative. Okay, so that's water splitting. Now, water splitting here um, is pretty interesting because we want to talk about uh, if you have an acidic condition, if you have a basic condition, or if you have just pure water here, okay? So what we want to see here is um, in pure water, okay, in pure water, we um, will say that H and OH is equally balanced, okay? So pure water is completely neutral, basically. H, draw an arrow here. H plus is equal to OH minus, okay? Now, if you have acidic conditions of the water, what can you, what makes something acidic? Let me draw the arrow again. Something that's acidic means you have more H plus 
then you do hydroxide. Because this guy is what makes it acidic, okay? Now, if you wanted to say something was basic, that means you have more hydroxide instead. So basic conditions. is where hydroxide is bigger, so I'll just draw the arrow the other way. Hydrogen is smaller than hydroxide, okay? So that's the um, basic truth. Um, this is true at every temperature, no matter what temperature it is, if it's pure water, H and OH are equal. If it's acidic, your H is bigger than OH. If it's basic, your OH is bigger than H. So if you were to draw it out, so, Let's say we have like, I'm just gonna make it three boxes here. So like, um, if this is 50-50, right? This is half and half. This is H plus and OH plus for pure water. If you want it acidic, uh, it doesn't matter how much, as long as it's a little bit over or a lot over, H plus is gonna be a bigger fraction than OH. We don't know how much we're saying, like for an acidic example, H has to be bigger. Um, the exact amount well, depends on the sample. And we're just saying in general, anything that's acidic, you have more H than OH. And then the opposite is true. If you have OH bigger than H, it means it's basic. Okay, um, so this line here is just telling you H and OH for pure water is exactly split up. They're equal, okay? Now, if you have acidic, you have more H than you have OH. Basic, you have more OH than you have H. So just keep that in mind for now, and that's true at no matter what temperature. And depending on what temperature it is, you have a you know different amount of ions that can be present, but they're all really, really small, so it's not a lot of difference. So at 25 degrees, okay, because we're at room temperature a lot, um, the splitting of water is um, two out of a, a billion. So about there, so, so you have, we will say KW at 25 degrees has a special number. It's one times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, now if I had pure water and KW at 25 degrees is this number here, okay? Um, pure water would tell you, well, you know, if that's the case, if I have pure water, I know this guy is the product of H and OH. So let me write it out. So KW at pure water is um, H and OH, okay? Well, this is not, this is for any kind of water, but anyway, it's KW H times OH, and this equals to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. So basically over here, I gave you the values, the formulas, and then now I gave you the formula um, in with a number attached to it here, okay? Now, so I wanted to start with pure water because I kept saying pure water. So pure water, we also know that H and OH are equal. Okay, so if we knew at 25 degrees, H times OH meets 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14, and you know these two are the same. So what I wanna do is go ahead and set H um, and OH the same value, and we don't know what the value is, we call it X. Okay, so that means KW here for pure water is X times X equals 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Then I can solve for what X is and I can know what H and OH is, okay? So X here is just square root on both sides, right? Equals to 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven. Okay, so for pure water here, this is true for anything at 25 degrees. And then at 25 degrees, we talked about pure water. So in this case here for pure water, H plus and OH minus is the same value. And we know the value for 25 degrees is 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven molarity. Okay, so if I were to draw it out now, it would look like this and it's kind of like amount half and half, 
both of them a 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven molarity. This is H plus, that one's OH minus, they're equal because it's pure water, okay? So this is at 25 degrees, so for pure water scenario. At 25 degrees, this number holds still, but what if we have an acidic condition here, okay? So I wanna show, let's talk about acidic. Um, have some space here. So let me do on the bottom here. So we want to talk about at 25 degrees still. Okay, acidic conditions. You know that H is bigger than OH. Okay, that means if you know 50% is 1.0 10 to the minus 7, H plus should be bigger than 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven, agree? And then we also know that OH should be smaller than that because it should be like somewhere here. When you draw the picture, it looks like this. Like you got more H than you do OH. So this one is bigger than 1.0 10 to the minus seven, this one is smaller than. So let me write it out. So if it's smaller than, I can write OH minus is smaller than 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven. Okay, and then if I wanna combine these two together, all I have to do is draw it out and say, well, you know, you can write these two in the same line, okay? So it will be H is the bigger amount bigger than 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven. And then OH is smaller than that. So OH goes on this side. So I'll go ahead and put the concentration signs in. So that's what acidic would look like. Now, what is the exact number? Well, it depends on the sample. Some of them is very acidic. So there's a lot more H than OH. Some will be just slightly more acidic, then it'll be just, you know, it'll be more, but not a big difference. So it depends on the sample, okay? But if it's pure water, we know it's neutral. This is exactly the same. That's no argument. Pure water is set as a number, but acidic is basically say, well, if you know it's acidic, one thing you know that ages will be bigger than OH, so you can say that statement is true here, okay? Now, if it's basic, it's gonna be the opposite of acidic. Okay, so let me write basic at 25 degrees here on the next page. So basic condition at 25 degrees. We know that OH is bigger than H. Okay, and that's the same as writing as early what I wrote. I think I wrote this earlier. I said it. H is smaller than OH. These two are the same thing, okay? Now in this case, I know OH is the bigger one. So if I wanted to draw it out, OH is the bigger portion, H is the smaller portion, okay? And then we know the middle line is 1.0, 10 to the minus seven still. And we know this time OH is the bigger one H is the smaller one. How much bigger, how much smaller? Well, it depends on the sample itself, okay? So um, what's interesting is this is at 25 degrees. So let's talk about something at different temperature, okay? Um, for water at 50 degrees, so earlier we said Kw, KW, what we just learned at 25 degrees was 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14, okay? Now I'm gonna give you a question here. The new question says KW at 50 degrees is 5.5 times 10 to the minus 14. So you see it changed a little bit, okay? Depending on temperature, went from 1.0 to 50 degrees is 5.5 minus 14. So it says here, for this 50 degrees question, okay, find 
H plus for pure water at 50 degrees. So earlier we found that um, H plus for pure water at 25 degrees, right? How did we do that? We said, well, we know what KW is. KW formula was H times OH. And we set it equal to the KW, which in this case, 50 degrees is a different number, 5.5 .5 times 10 to the minus 14. So I don't expect you to memorize all the numbers, but you do need to remember the one at 25 degrees because we do it so much at room temperature, okay? But if it's a different temperature, they'll give you the values that you need. So this one here is 5.5, 10 to the minus 14. And they say find H plus for pure water. Well, you know, for pure water means H and OH are the same. Okay, so we'll set them equal to X. We'll call this X, we'll call that one X. We'll say X squared, X times X from this equation up here, goes down here equals to 5.5 .5 times 10 to the minus 14. So x squared is this. So x is the square root of that. So take a square root of 5.5, .5, 10 to the minus 14, you get about 2.4, 10 to the minus seven. That would be the molarity of H plus and the OH minus actually for pure water. Okay, so that would be my answer. So um, my answer is H plus, and I actually know what OH is the same number, but they only ask for H plus. So H plus in this case will be 2.4 times 10 to the minus seven molarity. Okay, so hopefully everyone's still following here, right? Now that's at 50 degrees. Now, based on this observation here, 25 degrees was a smaller number, 50 degrees was a bigger number. Right, so I, I can write out an observation that I have here. KW gets bigger at higher temperatures. What does that mean? Is uh, the splitting of water endo or exothermic? Okay, so this process here, remember we said the process of H2O um, splitting up to the ions. You don't need the brackets in the equation. So I'm gonna mark that out. Okay, is this auto ionize auto ionization of water endothermic or exothermic? How can you tell? Okay, so this is what you learned in the previous chapter. We said uh, in different scenarios, so let me turn back to the page for the past chapter, okay? For chapter 16, we talked about how increasing temperature can change stuff. So it's on this page right here. Um, focus, focus. All right. See how it says exothermic here? And then we put the heat on the product side. And then if you increase the temperature, K went down, became smaller for exothermic. Uh, for endothermic, if you increase the temperature, K got bigger. Okay, so let's take back a look at this process here. We just observed the K getting bigger with increasing temperature. So based on that, what we learned is this process must be endothermic, okay? So it must be endothermic. Why? Because the K got bigger at higher temperatures. So that means the heat here 
was probably on the reactant site, right? And then it says here at higher temperature, it's because you raise the temperature, you raise the um, um, the heat, the reactant, and then it shifts it to the right. You get more ions here, and then that's how your number gets bigger. So it's an endothermic process. Okay. So I just want to make sure, see how we can apply, um, you know, stuff even from the previous chapter here. So you know, autoionization is actually an endothermic process. Um, in the lab, after the pH and buffer lab. There's a lab that will ask you, how can you tell which is endo or which is exo? And it's depending on changing the temperature. Um, when you heat it up, does it shift to the right or shift to the left? And that's how you can tell it's endo or exo. Okay, so you will have something like this in the future lab. All right, so let's continue here. So we were talking about 50 degrees here. Um, we were talking about pure water, right? So let's talk about acidic and um, basic for 50 degrees. So we know that the pure water midline is 2.4 10 to the minus seven. So let's go back. This is just a little sidetrack. So we go back to 50 degrees. Now we wanna talk acidic conditions, okay? So we know the middle point is 2.4 10 to the minus seven because that's for pure water. That means we know that for acidic, you have hydrogen concentration is gonna be bigger than 2.4 times 10 to the minus seven. And the hydroxide will be smaller than that. Okay. Now, if you had a basic condition at 50 degrees, we can write the same thing, but now hydroxide is the bigger one. So this number here depends on what temperature it is. Okay. What you always do to find a number, you get the number for pure water, and then you know the acidic and basic is higher and lower than that value, basically. All right, so that was 50 degrees. Now remember, I don't need you to memorize the number for 50 degrees. I only need you to remember the number for 25 degrees, which is that one. And for pure water is 1.0 10 to the minus seven molarity for H plus and OH minus. Okay, so make sure everyone remembers that for 25 degrees. So let's do another question here, okay? Let me flip over. So let's say, oh my gosh. All right, let's say H plus concentration, we found it to be 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven molarity at 50 degrees Celsius. Fine. OH concentration and KW at 50 degrees for water, it was 5.5 .5 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, so, all right. So in this case here, we know H we know the KW, we know the temperature was 50, they gave us the KW here. So they say, if you know one, can you find the other guy? So the way to do this is set it up, write the equation. I know KW is H plus times OH minus, and that equals to that value by 0.5 times 10 to the minus 14. I know that H plus is this value here, so I'm gonna just go ahead and plug that in. Okay, so that means KW equals to 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven, right? That's one, and then the OH concentration, and that equals to 5.5 .5 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, so for Ks, we don't use units for the K answer. So when you're plugging in the molarities and stuff for the K, you don't have to put the molarity units in, okay? Um, but in this case here, OH can be solved by basically taking 5.5 .5 10 to the minus 14 divided by 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7. So 
the answer will give you 5.5 .5 times 10 to the minus 7, right? This divided by that, okay? If it's 5.5 .5 and 1, I don't have to use a calculator. I can do it in my head here. But if you don't follow, you can always type it in your calculator and you get this answer. So this case here, you see how h plus is 1.0 to the minus 7, and your OH is 5.5 to the minus 7, so this OH is bigger than H, agreed? So in this case here, um, our OH is bigger than H. So OH is over here, H is over here, and then this one is 5.5 .5 times 10 to the minus 7, this one was 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven, right? So this is what condition? A basic condition, okay? So that's how you would be able to tell, and you know, depending on what temperature it is, they give you the KW, you can solve for H or OH, and then you can find out if it's acidic, basic, or um, neutral. In this case, yeah, we found out it was basic because the OH is bigger than H. All right, so let's do another question here. Okay, now we're still doing at different temperatures, and then we'll go back to like 25 degrees after this too. So in pure water, at this time we'll do 60 degrees Celsius. Okay, these relationships hold. It says H3O plus equals to OH minus equals to 3.1 times 10 to the minus 7 molarity. Okay? So, okay, so they gave us this hint here. So earlier the question gave us the KW. This one here, they don't tell you the um, KW, but they did tell you H and OH values for pure water is the same, and it's equal to that number. They gave you the middle line. And it says here, it is reported that an aqueous solution So let me know if you guys have questions, okay? At 60 degrees has H3O plus equals to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7 molarity. Okay, such a solution is A, B, C, D. A is neutral, B is basic, C is acidic, D is impossible. So a lot of times students have this because I told you guys to memorize for 25 degrees. I said 25 degrees, KW is 1.0 to the minus 14. 25 degrees, H plus is 1.0 to the minus 7 for neutral water. So a lot of times because they memorize the 25 degrees, they say, oh look, H plus is 1.0 to the minus 7, and they circle neutral. And that's a wrong answer because it's not at 25. This one's at 60, okay? So everyone, what do you guys think um, the answer should be here? A, B, C, or D? I just told you is not neutral. Any guesses? Or, well, you don't have to guess. Do you know how to figure it out here? How can you tell if it's acidic, base, or neutral? So I just did one above here. And I said, you know, I, I put this in. I figured it out. I had to find out that the basic was um, going to be a bigger number for OH. So what about this guy here? Right, so, so um, someone said basic. So basic is correct. Why? Well, this is the middle point here. So the middle point is 3.1 10 to the minus seven. If it was neutral, the neutral picture would look like this, half and half, exactly the same, right? Each one would be 3.1 10 to the minus 7. But you just, they just told you this guy's H plus is 1.0 10 to the minus 7, which means it's smaller. So like, it's like way over here, this is H plus. 
a smaller number and OH minus is gonna be the bigger number. And that's how I know it's basic. Okay, so you don't really have to do the math to figure it out, but you can do the math, right? Um, but in this case, if they're just asking you a solution is neutral basic acidic, well, all you do is take a look at this number here. This number is what's in the solution that they gave me. It's 1.0 to the minus seven, and they gave me the middle ground here. So that number is smaller. So H3O is smaller than the middle ground number. That means it's basic. Okay, now for us, if we wanted to calculate it, okay, let's go ahead and calculate it just so we can see the numbers actually prove this. Okay, we don't have to do it during a test because you don't have that much time, but since we're learning now, it's good to calculate to see, to see how we can apply all this. So we can um, go ahead and um, we can do, we have to find out what the KW is. And then if you know the KW, you can find out if the H plus is this number, what can be the, what's the OH number? So basically, uh, fine. The first thing we want to do is we can go ahead and calculate KW at 60 degrees here. So if you know pure water is H times OH equals this, KW is H plus times OH minus. Okay, and we know the value is 3.1 times 10 to the minus seven times another 3.1 times 10 to the minus seven. Well, that should give me the value for KW. So that would be, uh, just square that or just multiply it together. 9.6 times 10 to the minus 14. And this one is at 60 degrees, right? So we get the KW value here. So once you know the KW, we said 9.6 times 10 to the minus 14 equals to H times OH. And I know my H is this number, so I'm gonna go ahead and write it down. 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven right here. So what is my OH? Well, I can solve it, right? So OH here would be just 9.6 10 to the minus seven divided by 1.0 10 to the, I mean minus 14 divided by 1.0 10 to the minus seven. So you get 9.6 times 10 to the minus seven molarity here. So you could have done the math to figure it out, but if you did, if the question didn't ask you for the math, you could just look and compare, okay? So sometimes they give you the KW, sometimes they just give you the pure water relationship. Either way, you can figure it out. So basically, if they gave you the pure water numbers, you can find the KW. If they gave you the KW, you can find a pure water numbers. Either way it works, like this question up here, they gave you KW, you find a pure water number, the middle ground. Um, you can do that and figure out acidic or basic, or you can just plug it in and solve it and see one's bigger than the other. So we found a, um, if they ask you uh, KW is 50 degrees here, what's the pure water amount? We did that earlier here. We did that in this question here. So you can do it um, both ways. So the question sometimes will give you, here's my KW, find this guy for pure water. Or they say, you know, in this case here, here's a pure water number, find the KW. So it goes in multiple ways and you see questions kind of varying like that. Okay, so um, we did a bunch of different temperatures. We did 50 degrees, 60 degrees. Now let's go back to, um, um, our regular room temperature now, okay? So let me go to the next page here. I remember we, I told you to memorize uh, the room, uh, KW at temperature, room temperature. So 25 degrees, KW is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14, okay? And it's also probably a good thing to go ahead and remember for pure water, at 25 degrees, right? H plus and OH minus is the exact same number. And the number is 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven molarity. Okay, so with that statement, you know this part, let me go ahead and I'll give you the question. Determine if it is acidic, basic, 
or neutral. Okay, and if they give you the H plus, they also want you to find the OH concentration. Okay, so the first one, A, H3O plus concentration is 7.5 times 10 to the minus 7 molarity. Okay, just by looking at this number, can you tell me if this is acidic, basic, or neutral? You don't even have to do the math right now. Can you tell if it's acidic, basic, or neutral? Because we know that is the middle point number. That's 50% and 50%. This one number is bigger than the 50% number. Agree? So just by looking at that number, yes, we know that it's acidic. Okay? So sometimes you don't have to do the math. You can just take a look at the number. You can tell. But since, you know, we are learning, we will be doing the math, working it out, showing you different examples. So you know, it helps. Now, because it's acidic, they say, okay, find acidic, basic, and neutral. And then it says find hydroxide concentration. So let's go ahead and do that. So I know um, KW for, this is for 25 degrees now, right? So KW was 1 by O, 10 to the minus 7, um, 14, no, not 7. And that equals to H plus or hydronium times hydroxide, right? So we'll put that number in here. And then you have the hydroxide. And then to solve for the hydroxide, you take 1.0 10 to the minus 14 divided by 7.5 10 to the minus 7. Okay. So in this case here, hydroxide concentration is going to be 1.3 times 10 to the minus 10. Can you guys try doing this on your calculator? Because a lot of times when we start having these values here, you're not putting it correctly in your calculator. Please get your calculator out and try to make sure you can get this number um, with your calculator. Okay, so I just figured out hydroxide would be this number if my hydronium um, was this value here. Okay, and I know it's acidic because this number is bigger than my neutral point. And if we had to draw it out, basically, uh, it's acidic, so you have more H than OH. H plus is bigger, OH is smaller, and H plus value is 7.5 times 10 to the minus seven. And this hydroxide number was 1.3 times 10 to the minus 10. Okay, all right, so that's the first one. Let's do another question. We'll do part B. So leave some space here uh, before you do part B because I want to do some other calculation over here after I show you some other stuff. So you get, let me check. Where's my calculator? Hold on a second. So to do this here, mm -hmm. one ten to the minus fourteen divided by put a bracket around it. 7.5, 10 to the minus 7. Oh, you can't see. Tilt it like that. Oh, I wrote it wrong. It's 8. There. 8. Still smaller. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. In this case here, let's go to part B. Let's do this time H3O plus equals to 1.5 times 10 to the minus nine. Okay, without calculating, can you tell me if this is acidic, basic, or neutral?
So in this case here, since this number is 10 to the minus 9, is smaller than 10 to the minus 7, right? So yes, it is basic. So if they ever didn't ask you to calculate, then you actually didn't have to do all this math here. So I'm glad we checked because I totally wrote it wrong here, um, 8 and 10. But let's go ahead and do the math here to find the OH, okay? So we know that um, the number is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 because we're at room temperature. And that equals to 1.5 10 to the minus 9 times the OH. So let's double check this one. Divided by 1.5 10 to the minus 9. I get a 6.7-ish times 10 to the minus 6. So you do see the hydroxide number is bigger, right? So if you were to draw it out, you would see a picture where the hydroxide is bigger. And this one is a 6.7, 10 to the minus 6. This one is a smaller number, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 9. All right, okay, so the next one that we wanna do is part C, H3O plus equals to 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven. Acidic, basic, or neutral. So this one here is gonna be easy, right? This one says what? It's exactly the same as my middle ground number that I told you guys to memorize. Same number is right there. So, this one here will be neutral, basically pure water, okay? So if it's neutral here, I mean, you don't really have to calculate it. We already know it's always just the same number. If you calculate it, you get 1.0 times to the minus seven, okay? And this is the one where it's equal, half and half, 50-50, 1.0 times to the minus seven, 1.0, 10 to the minus 7. Molarity, molarity. This is H plus, and that's OH minus. Okay, so you guys remember we talked about pH? Um, like, you know, in general, they tell you, you know, pH of pure water is, uh, what, what's the pH of pure water? You guys know that pH of pure water is 7, right? So we said always oh, neutral is 7. So I wanted to show you guys where the pH scale, what it looks like, okay? So I'm gonna go to the slides for a second. We'll come back to this page to calculate some pH stuff. So what's cool is, let's go back up a little bit. Slide number 32 shows us, in this case here, you see how these are the list of KW at different temperatures. You don't have to memorize this at all. You do have to memorize the one at 25 degrees, okay? 1.1 to the minus. And you see how the pH here for pure water is seven, right? Do you notice that we change the temperatures, the pH is not seven? Why? Because our KW is not the same number. So KW and pH is somehow related. Why? Because we just calculated. We said, you know, the KW tells us a um, multiplication of H and OH, and we know H is bigger than OH, then it, the, the number kind of depends on uh, the KW value. So just remember, when we say neutral, we say pH 7. It really applies to only 25 degrees. Okay, so a big assumption in all our pH calculations when we do our experiments in lab, we always say, make sure your stuff is at room temperature. Don't do it while it's hot, don't do it while it's cold. That's the reason why you do your titration experiments at room temperature too, okay? That's how you can get your seven. Now anyway, so these are the values here. If you notice at lower temperatures, your pH of neutral water is actually different than seven. pH of neutral water is gonna be different at uh, non-room temperature water. Um, at higher temperatures here, it actually goes down. Now, so what in the world is pH? The formula for pH is actually minus log of H plus concentration. And we know H plus concentration depends on the KW. You know, if KW for neutral changes 
at 25 degrees versus 50 degrees, our H plus changes, and that's why the pH changes for neutral. Okay, so when we say pH is seven for neutral water, it only applies, it's only true for 25 degrees. Okay, so just keep that in mind. But here's a formula, pH equals to minus log or concentration of H. So how do you get concentration of H? Well, you can calculate it from the KW values, or if they gave you this, in this case, we did hydroxide from H3O, but if I give you a hydroxide value, you can also calculate for H3O, same idea. Use the formula of KW here, okay? There is another shortcut I wanna show you. But let's take a look. You see your um, different pHs here. These are all your acidic stuff. And then rainwater, unpolluted rainwater is 5.6. Human blood, that's around seven-ish. And then you see how um, sodium hydroxide is 14. Ammonia is like about 10.5, 11.5, high pH. These are the ones that we call basic. These are the acidic stuff, the common stuff, okay? But the formula for pH is pH equals to minus log H3O plus, okay? And remember, the concentration of H3O plus for neutral, which we call seven, this one was 1.0 10 to the minus seven to get pH of seven. Okay, so that pH seven for neutral only is true for 25 degrees. Now, let's take a look here. The next slide, number 34, um, basically shows you the pH scale here, right? From zero all the way to 14. And then we say at seven, your concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven for hydronium ion concentration. And that's how when the H plus goes smaller and smaller, 1.0 10 to the minus eight, you get pH of eight. If your H plus is bigger, 1.0 10 to the minus five, you get pH of five. So that's how we can say neutral pH is seven. But no one told you it's only true at room temperature before this. It actually slightly changes when you change the temperature, okay? So that's the cool part. This is a pH scale, all right? So um, remember, anything higher than seven is the basic side. Anything lower than seven is the acidic side. Now, there is another scale. It's called pOH. It's related to pH, okay? So I wanted to show you pOH is kind of complementary to pH. So let's show you. Right here on slide number 41. Okay, so what's the relationship between pH and pOH? So take a look here. So we're going to do it only at um, for, um, 25 degrees here. We say, you know, neutral is 7 and 7, right? Um, pH plus pOH will equal to 14. So in this case here, pOH formula is minus log of OH. Okay, for neutral water, remember, 10 to the minus seven, that's only for 25 degrees. So the, all this stuff is true for 25 degrees. We say pOH is seven. And you see how seven plus seven gives 14. Six plus eight gives 14. So it's like complementary. If you know the pH, you can find a pOH. If you know the O8 pOH, you can find a pH. You know they total up to 14. And um, the pH skill uh, tells you a number and the other number for pOH, you can uh, subtract that from 14. Now, what does the pOH tell you? It's actually the concentration of hydroxide here, okay? So that's the part that we're gonna talk about now. We wanna start um, calculating pH values. So let me write out the formulas real quick, okay? So what we learned here from all these slides here at 25 degrees, we just know that pH uh, we're going to do our titrations, acid-base stuff at 25 degrees. So they won't mention the temperature. The only time we have like non-25 degrees is for like water stuff, water at 50 degrees, whatever. So usually our class will keep it at 25 degrees for the pH stuff. So pH is minus log of H. That's the formula, okay? And then pOH is minus log of OH, okay? And we also know pH plus pOH equals to 14, okay? Now, you might have seen something else. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this. So you see how pH is minus log H, pOH is minus log OH. There's something called pKa that you guys saw in the lab. 
What does pKa mean? pKa is minus log of Ka. Okay, so we know Ka, right? And then we so also we know there is a Kb for base, so pKb is minus log of Kb. <coughs> okay, another cool thing is pKa plus pKb adds up to 14. And if you took Ka times Kb, you get water, Kw. So these are the formulas you wanna go ahead and remember. Here's your short formulas. Okay, and the more we do, you just remember, it's really simple. P whatever is minus log of whatever it is. So pH minus log H, pKa minus log K is really the same thing, just one formula right there. And then how they add up to be 14, pK and pKb add up to 14. And if you multiply K and KB, you get KW. Okay, so based on this information here, let's go ahead, um, since we have the H and OH values here, we can get the pH and pOH of all these samples as well. Okay, so the next assignment I wanted to do is basically based on this formula, based on this really, find the pH and pOH, so find pH and pOH as well, okay? So let's do it. So how do you get pH and pOH? Well, you can do pH is minus log of this number, pOH is minus log of this number, correct? Or I can get one and then take 14 minus to get the other. The 14 minus, um, the number is faster. So I'll do that. So pH is minus log of H, 7.5 times 10 to the minus seven. So let's try that out minus log 7.5, 10 to the minus seven. I got like, uh, did I type it right? 7.5, 10 to the minus seven. Yep, okay, I got like minus log 6.12. Okay, so and then now POH would be 14 minus 6.12 because this is the total of pH and POH. Remember how pH and POH equals to 14? So if you know the 6.12 here, you take 14 minus 6.12, you can get POH. So that's how I got that, okay? That one equals to 7.88. Okay, can you guys do part B for me? So part B, what is the pH for part B? So it's minus log 1.5 times 10 to the minus nine. So tell me what the number is and then we'll find a POH. Um, 8.82, okay. So POH will be 14 minus 8.82, okay? Because I know it's pH plus POH equals 14. That will give me uh, five. Point one eight. Okay, now, and then the next one here, this is the, uh, the one that everybody knows, pH for something that's neutral was seven, right? Because it's, I'll write it out the formula, minus log 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven. And that's how you get the seven. Okay, and then we know that POH is 14 minus that. So we also get seven. Oh yeah, 5.18, that's right. <laughs> Simple typo. All right, so everyone good so far? We kind of know how to get pH and POH um, based on the concentration of hydrogen ion and hydroxide ions here.
Okay, and this stuff is useful because um, you are having to calculate what um, pKa, pKa, pKa actually in that, but the meaning of pKa is minus log Ka. So I can actually explain to you. So Ka tells you the acid and base strength, right? pKa is a number because they are too lazy to write 1.0, 10 to the minus whatever, like a real long number. They use a log number to make it smaller. Kind of like saying, you see how this is 1.0, 10 to the minus 7. If you use the log scale, you can just say 7. Same idea here. So pKa um, tells you the acid strength also. Um, um, the smaller the Ka here, uh, the stronger the acid because, you know, it. But it's basically the whatever the Ka value here it depends. So it's some sort of a measure of acid strength, and this is a measure of base strength. It's just a log formula, so you don't have as much numbers to write. Okay, and that's what pKa means here. Now let's go on to the next part here. We want to start calculating uh, pH for other samples. So this time. Uh, we'll do like a H plus concentration, OH minus concentration. So this one's going to be at 25 degrees again. Calculate 25 degrees. Calculate pH of each solution. Okay. Indicate if acidic, basic, neutral. So find out if it's acidic, basic, or neutral. Well, you could actually do that without calculating the pH, but so that's the first one is uh, H3O plus equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, and then uh, we'll do part B, OH minus equals 1.3 times 10 to the minus 2. So can you just, by looking, without calculating the pH, can you tell me if it's acidic, acidic basic, or neutral? Then we'll calculate the pH. H3O plus is 1.8, 10 to the minus 4, and this is for 25 degrees. So part A, just by looking, can we tell this is bigger than 1.0, 10 to the minus 7, right? So this one's acidic. Just by looking, you don't even have to calculate. And this one, just by looking, part B, 1.3, 10 to the minus 2 is really, really big compared to 1.0, 10 to the minus 7 for 25 degrees. So this part B is going to be basic. So based on that, you know, the part A's um, pH should be less than 7. Part B's pH should be higher than 7. So if you calculate and you got something wrong, you know you made a mistake. So it's kind of nice to be able to check yourself like that. But if we had to calculate the pH, it's minus log of the H number, right? So in this case, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. Let's see what it is. I got 3.74. And if you had to get the POH, you just take 14 minus that, correct? But they didn't ask for it, so we don't have to do it. So what about this one here? They asked for pH, but they gave you the OH. So you know what I would do? Now, there's one way to do it. You could do from the OH, find the H3O plus calculation using KW and then do the minus log of H. Or you can get POH and then subtract from 14 to get the pH. That way is faster. Okay, so what I'm going to do is the faster way. Basically, get the POH first. Minus log of 1.3 times 10 to the minus 2. The POH in this case here is 1.89. So the pH is 14 minus 1.89, which is 12.11. That way is a little faster. So remember the alternative way to do is alternative. Set KW is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14, that equals to H times OH. And then that equals to H plus here. And then you put 1.3 times 10 to the minus 2. That equals 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. H plus is this over there. Let's go ahead and do it. Uh, 
7.69, so 7.7. And then minus log of that. is 12.11. You see how this way is a little longer than that one? So try to do the faster way if you can. Okay, you, you get the same answer still, but I like this way because it's faster. Less math, less chances of putting in numbers wrongly into calculator as well. So that's that. Now, what if they gave you the pH and asked you to find a hydronium ion concentration? Find H plus if pH is 4.80 at 25 degrees. How can you do this? So earlier we've been getting pH values if they give you the H, right? So all you do is you plug it into the formula, okay? Or some people like to just plain out memorize it. I'll show you how I do it. So pH formula is minus log of H, remember? So all you do is plug it in here, you can set it up. So pH is 4.8, so put 4.8 over here, minus log of H. So how do you get rid of the log here? So I'm gonna go ahead and put the negative on the other side first. So negative 4.80 equals to log of H plus. To get my H plus, I'm gonna take 10 to the power of the log on both sides, okay? That's how you get rid of the log. Now, if you wanna get rid of LN natural log, you take E, this log here is base 10, so take 10 to the power. So H plus, is now 10 to the power negative 4.80. So there is a formula here. Sometimes people like to memorize this. 10 to the minus pH equals to H plus. Now, this becomes a problem if you're blindly memorizing because sometimes when you do problems and you get this, I have students that when we do calculations and we get to a point where something is 10 to the power of something, even if it's a positive number from, not from this formula, they, they like to just add a negative in because they're so used to memorizing this. So don't just try to put a negative every time because not all questions will have that. In this case here, we did have to move it because of the formula. So this is a negative here, okay? So 10 to the power of negative 4.8. Let's see what you get on your calculator. Do you guys know how to do this? 10 to the power of negative 4.8 on your calculator. I got, uh, I'm keeping two specifics, about 1.6, 10 to the minus five, okay? Everyone good here so far? All right, hopefully, let me know if you have questions, okay? Now let's do another one here, fine. OH if pH is 5.4 at 25 degrees now. Okay, so in this case here, OH and then they gave you pH. Well, if they give you pH, you can find concentration of OH, right? And then you can get your, um, um, of concentration of H and then you can get concentration of OH. That's the long way. What would be the faster way to do it? The faster way is, remember, pH and pOH equals to 14. So there's two ways to do it, okay? So I would do pH plus pOH equals to 14. So pH is 5.4 and then pOH I can solve for. In this case here, POH is 8.6, okay? So I know that part, and then I just do, well, let's plug it into the formula. So 8.60 equals to minus log of OH. So negative 8.6 log of OH, 10 to the power on both sides. So OH concentration equals 10 to the power negative 8.6. Or you can say 10 to the negative pOH equals to OH minus. Same thing. 
I just like to stick with this formula and plug it in. It's easier than having to memorize 10 different equations. So in this case here, I am going to get, let's put it in, 10 to the power of negative 2.5, no negative 8.6. We get 2.5 times 10 to the minus 9. That way is faster than the alternative. If you went to get, you know, from pH, you can get the hydrogen ion concentration, and then you use the Kw to find out which. You can do that too, but that's way longer. I would stick to the easier one, the faster way, okay? so. That's that. So if I give you H and OH, you can find the pH. And if I give you the pH, you can find the H. Now, we want to switch gears and do it on acids and bases. Okay, so we'll start with strong acid and strong base first. Remember, a uh, strong acid example is like HCl, H2SO4. And um, strong acids don't have a Ka number. They completely dissociate, right? So if this is a strong acid, hydrochloric acid here, can you find a pH? So we'll just assume this is 25 degrees, they won't tell you. So here's an acid, find a pH. Now you're like, yeah, we'll be, we're gonna be doing a poll. I just wanna finish this real quick before we do a poll. Um, how do you do this? If you have 0.1 molarity HCl, what's the concentration of H plus? Remember, a strong acid completely dissociates, right? So it would be 0.1. Okay, because um, of that number is the same. I don't know why I wrote an extra zero here. I'll just add in a zero here. <laughs> now it's consistent. All right, so we have this. Now, if you wanted to get the pH, what do you do? pH is minus log of H, so it's minus log of 0.1. And that will give you one. So you can actually find the pH of an acid. Okay, now let's do strong base, okay? You have 0 0.225 molarity KOH. Find pH of this guy. How would you do that? So KOH, group one and group two metals paired with hydroxide. Remember, we always say it's strong. So KOH is group one paired with hydroxide. This is a strong base. That means I know that my OH concentration is exactly the same as the KOH concentration, which is 0.225. If I had to find a pH, I should find a pOH first and then I can get the pH. That's the faster way to do it. So that's what I would do. pOH is minus log of 0 0.225, okay? And that equals to 0 0.65. So pH is 14 minus that. And it will give me the pH of 13.35. Okay, now here's a question that I like to, um, that everyone always miss and usually it's on your quiz or your test. Be prepared to see this. So here's one, do this one for me. Fine, pH. So this is group two hydroxide, right? So group two hydroxide is what? So while you guys are working on this one, I am going to pull out a poll and you tell me how you solve this, okay? Mm, rest the polls. Let's see. Um, yeah, last week we had a mention about weather, so let's do the weather one. Launch poll. What's your favorite weather? Rain, storm, sunny, windy, snow. Have you guys, some of you probably haven't seen snow if you were raised in Florida, born and raised. Something else, tell us. I can't think, I guess hurricane. Well, hurricanes kind of like storm. Why would you like hurricanes though? Unless it's hurricane warning and school gets canceled, but there's no hurricane that actually arrives. 
So our favorite weather is sunny so far. Everybody likes sunny, and today is very sunny. So that's awesome. Gives us, you know, time to go out and get your vitamin D. Oh, I know another season. It's called pollen season. <laughs> it pollened a lot lately. All right. So our favorite weather. We got some people that haven't voted, but um. Most of us like sunny weather, okay? So let's go ahead and end the poll here. You guys can take a look at the results. Everybody likes sunny weather. Actually, some people like rain after that. Rain is kind of nice. It's, you know, we need the water. The plants are happy and it's a nice day to stay inside and cuddle and have some warm drinks and books. Or maybe some of you like watch TV. All right, I'll stop sharing the results. We will go back to the question that we were working on, okay? So let's take a look here. How do you do this one? So the trick here is remembering what is your hydroxide concentration. It is not 0 0.015. It is actually double because there's two hydroxides. So remember group two hydroxide has double the amount of hydroxide that comes out. So it is actually two times 0 0.0015, which is 0 0.0030. That is the problem here. Another poll idea, favorite, Apple, Android, well, I gotta write this down. Yeah, and what's your major, favorite name of the day? Those are good ideas. Gotta remember that, yeah, I'll, the chat is recorded, so I'll be able to write it out later. Okay, awesome. Then you guys got any more poll ideas, let me know. Okay, so now that we have this, so the biggest problem is everyone just writes this and you can get it wrong. You have to multiply it first and then you get that POH, okay? So minus log of 0 0.030, oh, but I have an extra zero. Um, 2.52 and then pH would be 14 minus that. which would be 